4.45 p.m. Cardio and a long nap have already been completed. So all I've got to do is get in there and smash, thrash. That's probably all the ash words I know like that, but, you know, kill chest. So this is going to be a pretty freaking quick lift because I'm chilling out with side delts. At least, you know, I'm not going to actually have them in the the, uh, the four day split. So as of now and most likely in prolonged continuation, chest day, back day, arm day, leg day, repeat. And if I feel like I'm, you know, in need of a rest day, let's say, you know, for whatever reason, highly fucking fatigued, still sore, um, sick, that's when I would take a rest day. And honestly, even then, I think I'm probably prone to just go in anyway, whether or not that's the smartest move. But for chest, last chest day, or maybe it was the chest day before that one, I did some inclined Smith machine to start. So I think I'm going to recreate the start of that last chest day with this one. So inclined Smith first, you know, maybe one or two sets heavy. But, you know, if I warm up on the Smith machine, you know, I do a plate, two plates, three plates, and it just kind of feels off, then I might just move on to, like, a machine press or something. You know, I'm not totally married to the idea. That's just kind of what I think I'm probably going to do right now. But after a couple sets of heavy, like, I'm talking as much weight as I can do for eight, ten reps, you know, actually hit failure there. After two sets of those, I think I'll be pretty much satisfied with the amount of heavy sets that I've done and then I can move on to flies or cable press or whatever really focus on I don't know, just pretty much pumping them up solid stretch good burn crazy squeeze you know every other pump buzzword under the sun and then we're gonna be done once I'm fully pumped so I mean this might only take fucking I mean, if I was really quick about it, I could probably do the chest day in like 20 minutes, you know, but I'm still going to take my time between sets. Also got to warm up, so I'll probably be in there for at least 45. And when you add, uh, you know, yapping, more than likely I'll just be there till close at six. So when it comes to heavy pressing... You know, I think, actually, what the hell am I even about to say? <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Well, I totally forget. No, no, no. So, right, some days, like last, uh, or some, oh, crap, what day? Oh, yeah, some tricep days, especially lately. I've been starting off with really light um, single arm extensions and really squeezing, so starting the lift with a light squeezing set and then moving on to heavier sets as the lift progresses. Uh, I don't really do that pattern of s sets when I do chest. You know, I'm kind of locked into the idea of some heavy pressing first when I'm fresh, followed by you know, squeezing, stretch, fly kind of movements towards the end to really finish off the pump. So... Maybe I'm just constraining my mind by only doing it like that and not trying it in reverse. But it's worth for now. I think I'm going to keep it up. But I'm sure probably maybe the next chest day I'll change it up. You know. But it does kind of seem counterintuitive to me to do, you know, when you're fresh, to do light squeezing movements. You know, when you're fresh, I want to throw some weight around. That's just kind of how I see it. But you know, I'll get into, and you know, as much weight as I can do. Eventually, we'll get back into the four plate range for the incline Smith and incline barbell. But the point is not the weight per se. Like my goal is not to bench that many plates for that many reps, whatever. My goal is just each lift on the ball to consistently, you know, push myself hard. So whether or not I do a set of like three plates for 15 or three and a half plates for 10 or maybe one day I feel fucking a little bit uh, 
egotistically ambitious, and I try four plates, I only get six. As long as those sets are actually to failure, and they're actually hard sets, as hard as I can do, as many reps as I can get out, then that's sort of how I go about progressive overload. Like, if each lift you actually do moderately heavy weight to legitimate failure and you push yourself that hard, then I don't know if there's a need to necessarily track every lift's weight in a little training log and like look over and see how, okay, I gotta add, you know, two and a half pounds to this lift this week. I gotta add another two and a half. Now, I'm not saying that it's not work. Do not, uh, I'm not really informed on the topic of, uh, you know, micro loading or whatever. But, you know, from my perspective, I say just kind of make sure I, you know, go hard as I can each lift and <gasps> combined with a bulking diet, I do progressively overload. So I think that is all I gotta fucking say. Let's cut to, uh, let's cut to the little cable warm up and then we can see where this lift is gonna start. All right, so when it comes to warming up chest is the lift which I'll warm up the most. Like, before arms, I mean, if the first set of arms is gonna be pushdowns, you know, I'll sit here, do some pushdowns, that's it. You know? Legs, the first thing I warm up with is just light hamstring curls, a little bit of calf raises, but I just kind of increase weight, increase weight until I'm ready. But chest is the only lift where I'll actually warm up my accessory body parts very directly. So I know when I do these heavy pressing, my triceps are going to come into play. So I want to make sure they're warm. So I just start with some single arm pushdowns. You know, I know my rotator cuff is going to be in a fucking, not necessarily compromised, but definitely a dangerous position. I mean, I never hurt my shoulders doing back or doing arms. Every time I've ever kind of fucked them up and like left the gym with a crunchy fucking rotator cuff, it's been doing chest. So I always do some uh, rear delt activations, you know, rotator cuff activations. And then once those two sort of parts of me are warm, I'll do a little bit of chest flies here, just you know, kind of warm up chest. Of course, I'm about to go hit it. And then I'll start doing, you know, a plate for a few reps, two for a few reps, three for a few reps. And then by the time I'm fully warm, I feel confident doing, you know, a pretty crazy amount of weight, even though it's only my first set. But you know, these warm up sets are not fatiguing. I'm not wearing myself out right now. All I'm doing is prepping myself to be able to, you know, move upwards of a couple hundred pounds without incident. I think that's the goal of uh, every lift. But I'm gonna sit here for maybe five, ten more minutes or so, and then we can go over to either Barbell or Smith. Ooh. Well, looks like I predicted that right in the car. <laughs> yeah, six reps is just below what I would want to do. Let's drop it to three and a quarter and do another one. That was still a good set, but typically I like the eight to 12 range for something really heavy. Jump the gun just a little. Okay. 
that was good. That was pretty good. I um, I kind of lost tension for a second on one of those reps and just fucking dropped it on myself. Oh, when it comes to the negative, you know, I'm not necessarily the perfect example of someone to watch, but that is a portion of the rep. You know, I do not want to do all my reps. Push it up, drop it. Push it up, drop it. No, it's like, I do want relatively constant tension. That was just a little bit of fault on my side. But I think that's enough on incline bench. Very satisfied with it. So let's go move on to fucking some kind of cable something. Top to bottom cable press. So I've seen this before in a way that kind of, I don't want to say upsets me, but perplexes me just a touch. Because you got to think, if you're doing a cable press and you're like standing out here like this, then all of the force that you're putting into your fucking hands, you're also putting into your fucking feet. So it's like you're pushing up against a wall. So whenever I do like, you know, flies or cable presses, unless I'm doing them like here, so I don't have to worry about balancing, I always want to just bend over so that even though I'm pushing against my body, gravity is kind of keeping me in the same spot. You know, the last thing I want to do is do a movement where I have to focus really heavily on my balance. You know, that's why I do uh, face pulls laying down because otherwise I'd have to sit here and fucking, you know, be off balance like that. It just seems silly to me. So bent over cable presses, moderate weight, and I'm really trying to focus on a pretty good stretch, but especially squeezing just as hard as I freaking can. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's do one more a little lighter. But that feels pretty fucking good. Yeah. Of all the pec movements I do, nothing burns the most or nothing burns as much as these cable presses. This gym used to have a machine that was just like this. It was a fucking seat right here with two cable arms. Somebody must have broke it doing something stupid. But, dude, fuck, do I, yeah, I do want to do one more. I'll do some cable flies, different machine, because I want the handles to be much wider when I do a set of flies because I want a full extension uh, but let's get over there all right so it is just about time for my patent pending finisher for chest I um I pretty much always finish with this little super set so heavy set of flies first you know something where by the time you get to rep 10 you can't touch your hands anymore and then just you know bust out some partials then I'm going to flip around and drop the weight by like, I don't know, maybe 30, 40%. And instead of doing flies like this, standing, I'll bend over and do them like this. Almost more of a, a decline fly. I mean, I guess the basic logic on why I like it is it pretty much just always puts the finishing touches on the pump. Solid squeeze from the flies, so of course I'm going to get pumped up. But that second set or the second portion... Here I'm focusing on just a huge stretch. Like honestly, when I get to the top, I feel like I'm not even trying to like hold the weight up. 
I feel like just the tension of my pecs is stopping the weight from moving upwards. But uh, after this, man, we're done. And we can go check out what kind of craziness lies beneath this flannel cutoff. All right. Uh, fully pumped. Let's go check it out. Let's go see what's going on. All right, so that was just five sets for chest. And I mean, let's just judge off the pump, but I am more than satisfied. Whew. And that was a quick lift. I mean, I think that only took me like, I don't know, what, 30 minutes? Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say there's no merit to a lift with more volume than that. But if you're in here for like two hours, just doing one muscle group, I mean, come on, man. I think you got to hit it a little harder than that, you know. But let's, uh, let's see what we're looking like. Oh. oh my goodness. When it comes to scratching my back, that's a classic comment. How the fuck does Sam scratch his back? Well, <laughs> the mid back, I got to use the bear method. Just fucking rub up against something. But if I got something on my traps, I can kind of, you know, reach up here and get at it. But, dude, I mean, <laughs> fucking hell. What else is there to say apart from just fucking checking out the pump? Mm. Oh, my goodness. So, this morning was 248.6. And that's after about three weeks of pretty much just eating as much as I want. You know, four-ish thousand calories. <sighs> I got to start getting up to like, you know, 5,000. Actually making sure I hit it on a day-to-day -day basis. Because as this bulk progresses, if I have one day, like let's say a month from now, where I only get in, you know, to even 3,000 calories, I'm going to drop like two pounds. And then I'm going to be, I'm going to be playing catch up for the next two days to, you know, fill back up with all those carbs and glycogen. So got to stay on top of this shit, man. Got to freaking stay on top of this stuff. But let's just get in the car and freaking roll. Chest complete to satisfaction. Usually I would start off my post-workout ritual with 30 minutes of TikTok, but... I don't want to forget what I was about to say. So what I was thinking at, after that last set of flies and in between that, uh, the freaking frightening pose down was, that I think not, well, let's just say this, the way that I go about my lifts. Now this is kind of a little bit of an advanced method. Cause for one thing you will have had to you know, have lifted for, at least a while and have some solid, you know, basic info plus experience with how things feel, how to really go hard, how to get a pump, what movements you know will give you a good pump and just, you know, basic training knowledge. But let's say you've lifted for a while, you've picked a basic routine, you know, maybe your chest day is three sets of flat, 
two sets of machine press, and like three sets of pec deck. Whatever, you know, basic workouts, stuff like that. Once you've done that for a while, I think that a much, well, the way that I've been doing it, which I do like, is rather than having specifically written out workouts in terms of sets and numbers and exercise choices, like stuff like that written out, having just a basic outline of how a lift should look, I think that's gonna be a much better scenario. Because for me, this is pretty much all my chest days. All my chest days look the same if you look at the skeleton of them. Heavy pressing in the beginning, maybe some relatively lighter, obviously still moderate weight, pressing, you know, squeezing in the middle, and then probably finish with flies. And sometimes those little pressing and flies can get flipped around or I can do a little bit of back and forth. But heavy pressing, and that second section is flies and, you know, squeezing type movements. So if that is the outline of the chest day, then that means that every chest day, I can pick and choose whatever I, you know, kind of feel like doing. So heavy pressing, there's a couple of movements that I've got at my disposal, right? Dumbbell incline, uh, I mean, they're all gonna be incline, just cause I'm really biasing my upper chest, but you know, dumbbell incline, barbell incline, Smith machine, uh, machine press, if there's one that I like available. At that gym, there isn't a really heavy one that I like, so I don't start with it. And the dumbbells go up to 110, which is a little bit below my pay grade, unfortunately. So when I go to this gym, I'm locked in. I've got either heavy barbell or heavy smith. But still, that's a pretty solid choice. Some days I might feel like barbell, some days I might feel like smith. And then kind of on a subconscious level, I think that, you know, having or being able to make that choice every lift makes it a little bit more interesting to me. You know, the fact that I can go into the gym, have a basic outline of what I'm doing, and then pick specific movements that I want to do back to back, you know, it's just, it feels less like I'm just following routine and more like I'm just, you know, training, exerting myself like I want to and how I want to. So if you've been listening for a while and you've been looking for new workouts, I almost think you're sort of looking at the picture backwards. Rather than trying to find like a specific chest workout that you want to do, I think it's not a bad method if you kind of look back at all the workouts you've done, look at the outline that you like, and then follow that outline, but you know, pick and choose the movements that you want to do. Like when it comes to me for biceps, I'd say biceps are my most, um, uh, let's say, variable lift. Because my bicep days can look, oh my goodness, <clears throat> they can look substantially different from lift to lift. I've had bicep days where I only did one movement for the whole thing. Like I had a bicep day a while ago where all I did was close grip bicep focus pull downs, you know, Menser style. Haven't done them for a while. I am going to throw those back in every so often. But I had a whole lift where all I did was one movement. And then I've had lifts where all I do is standing, alternating dumbbell curls. But then I've also had lifts where, you know, I did two sets of like a preacher dumbbell, and then I moved on. Two sets of a cable curl, then I moved on. Two sets of dumbbell curls, move on. Like, each set, for me, biceps, uh, well, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. The outline for my bicep days is really just fucking however many sets of curls I want to do. So to change it up, I, I just do whatever I feel like. Some days I feel like really heavy dumbbell curls. Other days I might want to start with a machine, kind of lighter, and really focus on squeezing and kind of burning out that way. You know, it's just kind of whatever I want to do. And I don't know, I think that's just, that's, maybe that just, maybe that's just subconscious, a personal thing for me, that I kind of like making decisions on my own for my own progress. You know, it's like, I'm the captain of my ship. I want to steer it how I want to fucking steer it, you know? Of course, I'm going to base that off of what I think is going to give you the best results. But for you to be the one deciding what you do, how you do it, how hard you go, you know, I think you're just going to have a better, you're just going to have a better time. And once you've reached that level, I mean, you'll just be a fucking proficient lifter. If you can go to the gym on any given day, 
or any given moment, you know, someone tells you, what's a good chest workout? And rather than, you know, thinking about ones that you've seen before and just regurgitating the information, if you can just kind of say, okay, well, if you do two sets of this like this, and then you do two sets of that like that, and then maybe just like that, I feel demonstrates just a much deeper understanding of what you're doing. So, but then again, that's just kind of how I, how I'm wired. You know, if you need to follow a routine and you want to have a routine written out on your phone and that's how you like it, then do it like that. You know, I'm not telling you the best way for you. I'm just telling you the way that I like doing it. But you know, whether or not someone gives you a routine or you've got a coach or you're doing all this shit solo, you know, you don't want anybody's help. The only factor that, you know, comes into play across all of those situations, which is going to determine whether or not you actually get results, or at least give yourself the potential to get results, obviously you've got to eat a lot of food to you know, gain weight and muscle, is your intensity in the lift. You know, I say this a bazillion times, if you do a fucking, let's say you did a perfect chest day, let's say someone had a specific AI generated model, which like you, they would take your blood and they'd know your DNA and they'd know your amount of fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers in your pecs. And it could formulate like an eight set chest day, which was just perfect, perfect exercise selection and everything. If you just go through the motions and your sets aren't really hard, and I don't mean really hard, like, okay, well, this is starting to get uncomfortable. I'm done. Like, I, I really mean for most sets, you should try to get to fucking failure. You know, I'm not saying that is the indicator of a good set, but, you know, what else is? Are you just going for a subjective feeling? Like, oh, my pecs are kind of tired after rep 10. I'll just rack it. We're done. It would just make sense to push it until you physically can't do any more. But like, like I was saying, or what I'm trying to say, is no matter what you're doing or who's dictating what you're doing or whatever, right? Over time, you should be able to push yourself harder and harder and harder. You know, let's say physically on that first set of uh, Incline Smith that I was, my chest was physically capable of another rep or even another two reps. You know, who's to say, right? The limiting factor in that case is just, you know, my mind and how hard I'm able to push it. Now, for one thing, it is a skill, right? To be able to exert yourself during these uh, these sets in those last couple reps when you know you really are at your fucking physical limit. The longer you go to the gym, the easier that's going to be for you. But you know you also kind of have to have that fucking you know that dog in you attitude to be able to sit on the bench for a couple seconds before you set. Come <sighs> on, and then throw some shit around. I think that's all I've got for my little hype up speech. Basic premise. Go hard. That's all there is to say. Another quick anecdote. On the last back day, so this is totally unrelated to what I've been saying. On the last back day, when that guy was spotting me on pull downs and he started talking, I was like, hey, I'm talking to the fucking viewers. <laughs> me and him are fucking buddies, man. I would. <laughs> that's like when I said that shit to the dude who, um, uh, was talking to the guy who was about to spot me on the uh, on the easy bar of preacher curls and I was like quit distracting my spotter you know if I say some shit to like a random dude in the gym I mean I would it's pretty much always or not even pretty much it's always somebody that I already know and I'm just kind of goofing on them but yeah cardio in the morning back day tomorrow I think I'm gonna go to a different gym which has a lot more um, hammer strength machines, which I like. I haven't been there for a while. It's the, um, it's the, is it Metro? Metro Fitness? Fuck, I can't remember. Whatever. It's in, a, it's in Columbus. Love that gym. I haven't gone for a little while. I think it's, well, it's really just because I'm probably lazy and I don't want to drive 20 minutes when I could drive to this gym, which is only 10. But they do have some pretty cool machines. Plus, the vibe is just sweet, since it's more of like an old-school bodybuilder gym. So that'll be the plan for tomorrow. And, I mean, it's 6.05 now. 
my night is done. I get to fucking, ah, dude, it sucks. So something about my computer, Fortnite is just bugging. Like whenever I move to look around, frames drop to 30, gets all choppy. Warzone runs well. Maybe I'll play some of that. I used to be a fucking addict. And then I think I got shadow banned or something. I don't know what I did, though. It's not like there's fucking team chat in Warzone. But I was going from like hours upon hours a day to zilch. Probably good for me, though. You know, I, um, I try not to say anything too upsetting, per se. Like, apart from cardio, which I will shamelessly call your lazy ass out on. But for the most part, I try to be a little more tame. But... What? Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Hold up. When it comes to fucking gaming... Fuck, man. I mean, you gotta think. You only got so many hours in the day. Right? At least make a couple of them productive towards a greater end goal. You know? Because it's not difficult for you to just kind of, you know, do your daily responsibilities work, school, etc., and then come home, fucking, you know, your, your friends text you once every blue moon, let's start a Minecraft world, and then you spent, you know, seven hours playing that, and you didn't really do anything, you know, I'm not like Gary V. it's not like I need to be productive 24 fucking 7 to live, but, well, actually, I don't know, I think maybe I'm kind of an asshole, <laughs> And I'm really just saying that uh, the, <laughs> you should just get in the gym and lift instead of playing, you know, two hours of League of Legends. Not that that's necessarily terrible. As you get what I'm saying, you know. I mean, you're not going to catch me skipping a lift to do some shit like that. Oh my goodness! But now I'm getting into a hardcore ramble about all sorts of topics and subjects. So. Do I keep going or do we call it here? Let's think about it for five more seconds. Oh yeah. Finals are coming up, man. This semester, or I guess for your high school or this quarter, it is almost over. It's almost freaking over. So the enlightened lifter, the responsible lifter, he isn't gonna let his studies interfere with the pumps, of course, that would be foolish. That would be fucking crazy, borderline insane. And that does not mean, and I am not saying, skip out on studying to go to the gym and lift. Right? What I'm really saying is just you know, make use of the time that you have and use it responsibly. Dude, fuck, man. All these deer are in a rut. They're just running around all over the place. This one's just... Can you see him? Get out of here, man. Get the fuck out of the road. If you could see him, that's probably pretty funny. But, uh, yeah. Be responsible with your time, man. If you know that you've got three hours of studying, and it's five o'clock, you gotta make an executive decision. Do I lift now, or do I study now? And the longer you kind of dwell on that, and you just play on your phone and scroll TikTok and just bleed time away, then it's going to end up being 9 o'clock out of nowhere. You're going to say, oh, shit, i got to study. And then you're not going to go to the gym. You know? I find it kind of interesting that all of my lifestyle advice is purely related to just fucking getting a pump. Pretty valid, though. Pretty valid, though, in my opinion. So that's all I got, man. I'll see you tomorrow for back as well as calves. As well as calves. I think it's been like three days since I've hit calves. I've been a fucking lazy ass chump. Not that they're small, but if I want bigger calves, that means I gotta hit them directly. And the same thing goes for you. So, uh, I'm out. Later.